In this piano tutorial, we will be learning the hymn at the cross, and I'll be teaching it in the key of C major, right? Hopefully a key that most of us are familiar with. And this is such a good hymn because of the melody, right? It allows us to get creative with the harmony that we choose or the chords, the voicings that we choose to play with the actual song, okay? So if we play the melody, it sounds something like this, right? For the first verse. Right, that first half of the verse. And let's say we would... we um we're playing i guess the basic chords to this melody right we would start off on the one then we would go to the four and then the five right that i guess that we can call that the most basic way of playing the chords to this song but like i said since it's such a rich melody we can get creative with all the chords that we use so one approach that that we could use, for example, if we played a little bit more advanced with more gospel or jazz chords, it would sound something like this. Right, and all I'm doing here is substituting and using passing chords, right? So I started off on the one. And then instead of just staying on the one, I substituted the one for a four. And the reason why this works in this case, um, I guess my thought process behind it is that the C in the melody is also within the F major chord, right? So that also gives us the option of using any other chord that includes a C, right? For example, um, let's say we were playing an, a D, minor seven right that includes a c so we can technically use this chord as well right and it works out um so from there i went to the three and again still using the same thought process this g is the melody note but it's also included within an E minor chord. So I'm on the three, playing under this G. And then since it's a three, most of the time when we're playing a three within a major scale, the next chord tends to be a six, right? Those two, since they're a fourth apart, it sort of leans into that six. And also the six can serve as a substitute for the one, right? because of the two notes that it has in common, right? C and E. So three. And what I do here now is instead of voicing it as an A minor, we have the option of voicing it as an A dominant flat nine, right? A, A seven flat nine. Because the next chord that I'm going to use Right. If you remember the basic chords, the next chord would be an F. But in this case, I'm substituting the F for a D minor. But I'm also going to do a second substitution. Right. Instead of playing a D minor, I'm actually substituting that D minor for a B flat. Right. So. Right. I'm on that B flat. And as you can see, I actually used this F9 or F13 as a passing chord to get to that B flat, in this case, major nine, right? It's serving as a, a secondary dominant. Then I went back to the D minor, and then I approached this G sus4 in this case. So. Also use this F, um, F sharp half diminished as a passing chord to get to the the five, right? And this F sharp half diminished, um, I like to think that it's derived from a D dominant chord, right? I'm just omitting this D down here. 
then the the melody kind of um repeats itself sort of right very similar so in this case let, let's go instead of going to the one let's go to the six so da, 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 da. then the five then the one in this case i'm playing it as a as a suspended chord or a dominant suspended chord to get us to that four right and we have options again we can either play the four or we can play the two right it's all within it all depends on the melody so That's how I would end this verse. And then we get into the chorus of the song, right? The melody go like goes like this. And right, let's stop it right there and see what what are the basic chords for this for this section. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Right, we're just playing a C or the one and then going to the five. We can stay on the five and then we're back to the C, right? Two chords. Um, how can we get creative with this melody, right? Um, at the cross, at the cross, right? And this progression that I just played, I played a one, then a three, then a six, which I made it a suspended chord and then resolved it into an A dominant. It's sort of leading us into that next chord, which would be a two, right? Usually when we play a three, then a six, the next chord tends to be a two, right? All because of that circle of fourths, right? It's or almost like a, um, a two, five, one leading us to the two, right? So, uh, the cross, the then we get to that two and then finally we get to that five and then from here right again using that suspended six to a dominant six and then the two then a five and all i'm doing here is playing the melody within the chords that i'm playing right right all that changed was that note and the good thing about these of maintaining the melody is that it actually gives us different voicings we can use right In this case, I'm playing a, a G, right? But when I add this F up here, it gives us that G7 sus4, right? Right, and all I'm doing here is setting up another progression, sort of as a passing chord to get us to the four. Right, which is the next part of the of the chorus. The melody goes like this. Da, 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 sorry. Da, 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 da. Right, a very common melody that we may remember. So in this part, um, what I did was play a five one four. I go to a two da. then we have options right we can play a one over five we can play an E minor we can play it as a uh, a diminished chord right an E7 flat nine to get us to that six right West Coast movement right there. And 
now that I just played this this movement right here, all I'm doing there is alternating between the two and the one, right? The two, the one, the two again, and then the one. In my right hand and the left hand, I'm playing the the bass note, right? That's all ones and twos, right? Sort of a, a mini tip within the lesson. So <laughs> right, so what I want to do now is play the whole song. Um, I'll try to include different movements. That way you have an, an idea of what else you can do within the song. And hopefully you can take these ideas and be able to expand um, upon them, right? Add your own ideas and expand your musical vocabulary. So I'll leave a MIDI file in the description. That way you can download it and study it at your own pace.